Podcast ini bisa disimak di kbrprime.id dan platform podcast lainnya. Kamu lagi dengerin Love Bus bersama saya, Asrul Dwi. Episode ini saya ngobrol bareng Rana Tamrin yang baru saja merayakan ulang tahunnya. Bareng Rana saya ngobrol perkara banyak hal. Dari perkara representasi media tentang transpuan atau cerita-cerita transpuan dan keberagaman identitas gender dan seksualitas di Indonesia. Kita juga ngobrol perkara her dating life and being in her thirties. Love Buzz Membicarakan perkara yang tidak dibicarakan ketika berbicara perkara cinta Kan kemarin habis ulang tahun, how was it? <laughs> My birthday, it was so small I apa specifically requested it to be very very small and intimate Jadi cuma ada aku dan tiga orang teman lainnya They make me feel special but like I know The celebration is not necessarily about me It's about them celebrating me If that makes sense mm-hmm. So mm. it was it was nice We had dinner And we had like a, like a pool day For five hours <laughs> <laughs> Kenapa milih untuk merayakan ulang tahun Yang lebih intimate, kecil aja um, I mean, it's definitely It's a choice First of all It's my choice uh-huh. But yeah um, As I grow older I realize It's not so much about how big a party is But like how important the feeling is Jadi kayak regardless of big or small If I spend it with someone that I really care That I feel uh, they're very important in my life So that that makes up for it. It's enough. So yeah, we didn't even go out after the dinner. We're just like it's enough. I wanna go. Uh-huh. Like it's, it's almost 11 p.m. I wouldn't say uneventful because it, it was an event. But yeah, it was very easy. It was very chill. Mm. Lots of conversation. Good food. Yeah, just being together. How do you feel now that you are 31? Yang kamu rasain apa di ulang tahun yang ketiga satu? Apa ya? Um, kind of make it put things into perspective. Kayak mm. dulu. Waktu in my early 20s, I can't imagine being 30s. I can't imagine feeling that old. But now that I'm here, uh-huh. that I've arrived, I don't feel any different. It's mm. like there's a saying when someone said, um, you know, so I mean, of course, I watched it on TikTok. Someone asked someone who is in their 50, how old do you feel? And then most of them are saying like, I feel 30, I feel uh, 27, I feel this, I feel that. And that's exactly how I feel. Uh, you know, I feel I feel like how I was when I was 20. Mm. The, the significant difference would be like, at, like I know better, you know, like I know how to manage my emotion more. I know how to manage my anger more. I know how to... listen more if that makes sense i think that's 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 the difference between me feeling in my 20s and me feeling in my 30s that's that's the only difference but like in terms of how i feel as in myself it's the same so like it's no longer scary if that makes sense emang dulu apa yang ditakutin gitu What are your fear of getting older? I think like the feeling of being insignificant mm. for sure. Mm. You know, because like in your 20s, you don't know what you could achieve or what you could do. But then you also feel some sort of like, but 30 is not that far away. Mm. Like, can I actually make something, you know, within that 10 years? That's pretty much like how I feel. Like, what am I doing with my life? Funny enough, that's how I feel. <laughs> When I was 20 mm. Still feeling the same When I'm 30 Oh my god I will be 40 soon What have I done? I think it's like Very human To take things for granted yeah. You don't necessarily Appreciate like things When it's close to you When you're doing it All you know is like Oh this is like What I have to mm. do This is something that I'm doing But then when you grow Or when you Kind of go Away from it Then you realize Like mm. oh my god I was actually doing something you know what i mean yeah. so it's the same feeling and that's the thing that i want to be more aware
aware of in my like you know going forward is that not necessarily be in a moment but more so of like acknowledging that like I'm doing something being present no? yeah, yeah I'm doing something and this is something that um, I should not take for granted regardless of what it is like friends even like you know speaking about birthdays like you know your birthdays mm-hmm. you know now I see like I don't need to go all night I don't need to have the biggest party mm-hmm. for it to be special berempat kan tadi mm-hmm. ya. orang yang dipilih ada di ulang tahun Rana they must mean something to you right itu cara kamu buat I don't know maybe uh, to create sense of home here in Bali me- mencoba untuk membangun rumah di Bali gitu kan jauh dari keluarga juga ya I mean yeah for sure empat orang ini nih memang kayak one of the closest friends I have right now I'm someone who I need that close proximity to people in order to be close with them you know like I see my friends back home in Jakarta still as my close friend but because you know right now we're doing like long distance friendship you know what I mean <laughs> it's it's not like I don't feel close to them but like I know they care about me you know like I'm I, I'm not gonna like you know force them to like oh it's my birthday everyone needs to like come here no yeah if that makes sense for this particular four it's because not only we're close emotionally yeah approximately uh physically we're also close with each other we live not far from each other like only 10-15 minutes from each other so like yeah let's let's do it you know mm. what I mean like I have other friends but I need that emotional closeness in order for me to be able to kind of see them as part of my life if that makes sense mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yeah these four I do see them as way than just friends I see them as part of my life and I see them to be part of my life for at least the next 10-15 years Masih akan ada di Bali enggak? 5-10 tahun lagi Me, I don't know You know, because like as most things have expiration date mm. I feel like there will be time when me being here I'll be like, that's enough my time <laughs> <laughs> But I need to like move somewhere else yeah. um, Or even move back to my parents You know mm. what I mean? Because like they're they're growing old They're not getting any younger So yeah But no, I see myself still going to be... Um, Uh, friends with these people they're still going to be part of my life mm. so the, 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 the same way like you know my friends in Jakarta are part of mine even though we don't see each other every day yeah. we don't maybe call on each other every day you know what I mean apalagi sekarang with you know social media reaching out is um, getting easier keeping everyone's tabs is easier mm. by just watching their um, Instagram stories yeah. you know what I mean like you don't even need to like how are you anymore you just like ah yeah I haven't seen her and then you just like go to like their stories like she's doing good uh-huh. she's okay so yeah it's things like that kadang kita masih butuh check on our friends right nanya kabar mereka simple act like that I mean for sure but you also cannot necessarily expect that for yourself mm. if that makes sense because like you have your own life they have their own life they don't necessarily always have you know time for you mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it is important to have that check in from time to time but i don't think it's mandatory enggak harus yang oh seminggu sekali atau sebulan oh, yeah. sekali it, it, it doesn't have to be you know mm-hmm. what i mean because like when they know you care about them and you know they care about you it's just You don't need them to prove it to you. You mm. don't need to prove it to them, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's almost like an unspoken understanding, if that makes sense. Except for, like, of course, if there's like a major event that happened in their life, in my life, like, you know, for sure, I would, you know, let them know. Or I would ask, you know. But other than that, I don't see... You do need to maintain friendship, but I don't see it to be something that you need to, like, meticulously, you know, continuously prunes continuously you know maintain and stuff like that like it, it can be toxic yeah, in a yeah. way apa yang bawa Rana ke sini atau Bali choose you or you choose Bali well i mean i wasn't there's there's no plan of moving here whatsoever mm. i was actually i mean the reason covid play the majority of why i now live here is mm. because i had a shoot back to back two shoot two weeks each 
like three years ago in 2021. This was a year into COVID, right? And then I came here roughly around in July 2021. I was shooting, everything was, uh, you know, great. And then I decided to like, let me take like three days off on the weekend, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I booked my flight on the Monday within that July. I forgot exactly which date, but anyway. And then they canceled my flight. They closed the airport. Nothing is going in and out. And then I found myself like, oh my God, I'm stranded, you know? Mm. And then like, I called my boss saying that I can't go back to Jakarta, you know? However, with that being said, all of the footage that I shot in this hard drive yeah. that I can send out back to Jakarta, but I can't go. I can't. There's no <laughs> flight. You know uh -huh. what I mean? No one is going in or out of the island. So I stay put and they had a total lockdown in Bali, in Jakarta for like three months. And within that three months, you know, I found my friends, mm. you know, these four people. Mm. I, I found um, communities here. You know, I all of a sudden I found myself like I have a routine here in Bali. Like I'm not just here because of COVID like I for some reason created a life here and so you know after three months I called my mom just like I think I'm staying and then because it's, it was still COVID um, it's not like I need to go back to the office anyway I was working remotely if that makes sense and so I decided to stay and yeah so I had no plans on living here I had no plans of actually moving you know what I mean so yeah, everything I have here, I got in Bali. Not mm. because like I brought it here. If you want to call it like Bali chooses me, perhaps. But I definitely didn't plan to to move to Bali. It just happened. Punya ekspektasi tertentu gitu nggak sih ketika pindah ke Bali? No, no expectation whatsoever. Mm. Like one of the reason why I stayed is because. My friends here, friends that I met throughout that year in 2021, and we became close, you know, maybe, you know, the fact that Bali was on lockdown, there are no one coming or going kind of forces us into became even closer. You mm. know what I mean? Because like there's not a lot of people here at the moment, you know mm. what I mean? And yeah, wherever I go, well, unfortunately, I, I live in Changgu <laughs> and at the time, everyone who lives lives in Changgu live somewhat permanently there so it's almost like a close community because everyone knows everyone mm. you know what I mean yeah. there's no tourists because like there's no one coming in and no one's coming out so it's just us in Changgu uh -huh. you know so like if you did something bad everyone knows no, so yeah yeah I think that's that's what draw me into actually deciding to like I'm not going home because like I met good people here mm. I created my own community Mm. And I, I already have like my own routine daily mm. where I would exercise in the morning mm. and then go out and have breakfast with my fans catching up and stuff like that and then go back to our respected houses <laughs> and like you know work remotely uh -huh. yeah and that still happens still today mm. and how has it been for you living in Bali oh it's been very how do I say this it kind of opens my eyes mm. because like I've lived so long in Jakarta that I don't necessarily think commuting from your home to your work four hours a day you yeah. don't you don't think that that's not normal because mm -hmm. that's what everyone is doing yeah. that's what your parents has been doing mm -hmm. that's what you do so you don't think that that's crazy mm -hmm. but that I moved here where I don't need to commute anywhere beyond 15 minutes mark yeah. that just makes me feel like oh my god I was insane how did I subject myself to that <laughs> like four hours a day Monday to Friday I was like whoa so for sure like I feel like my living quality Quality becomes better. I have more mm. time to actually work out, you know, or just like being lazy in bed. Because, mm -hmm. like, think about it like, four hours every day, four hours that's a lot. It is, yeah. For you to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And when I was living in Jakarta, I spent that stuck in traffic. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's just something that, like, like it opened my eyes. It's like, whoa. I don't know if I didn't move here. I don't know if I would would think that that's not normal because that's just what I've been subjecting myself mm. to. Not just me, like most people who commute, mm. you know, from, I don't know, Bekasi 
to Jakarta or Depok to Jakarta. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's insane. In a way, being here, tinggal di Bali juga uh, bikin Rana lebih in touch to yourself, I guess. It definitely opened my echo chamber because I realized, I mean, in Jakarta, I lived in such echo chambers and here I kind of push myself to go beyond my mm. echo chamber. Not always, you know what I mean? Because like, it's exhausting, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But like here, I push myself into meeting with like, you know, different people, mm. you know, like even people who are far right. <laughs> Yeah, it, it kind of helped me grow into someone who's like, instead of, you know, immediately attacking them or dismiss them by telling them that they're wrong. Now I'm someone who's like, okay, let me sit this one out and hear you out. Like, mm. what happened to you? Like, who hurt you? Mm. So that's what I've been doing. And it opens my mind into into like, these people are not necessarily wrong or bad. They just they have different views to you, which are valid. Mm-hmm. Because they also have different backgrounds to you, different upbringing, different mm. different experience. So it just makes me like as a person, I'm now more flexible than I was when I was living in Jakarta. In Jakarta, I don't know if you feel the same way that I do. There's always like a divide. You know what I mean? Like you go to a club, it's like very clicky. Like people don't necessarily mash together or like, you know, just like, you know, yeah, it's very clicky. Like here, not so much. Like everyone is like very welcoming, mm. and I feel like if I'm still stuck into that clicky mindset where I'm not gonna open my space towards like people with different opinion than me, that's on me. That's me being that's toxic. True, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. That's that's not that's not them being stupid or like that's not mm. them being far right. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's definitely there's a lot of moment where my perspective is like you know challenge, mm. and I am happy that it was because it brought me into this place where I welcome all mindset, all perspective and actually it's very interesting to to, to listen to them. Apa yang Rana temuin ketika ngobrol bareng mereka? There's a lot of like men here who are misogynistic and rightfully so. That's the reason why they're, you know, in Asia, in Bali because yeah. they think like, oh, I can get with like um, Asian women who are very subservient yeah. very like submissive and stuff because like that's their culture and whatnot i used to have so much problem with those type of men but now i feel like okay i don't need to immediately attack them now mm. i don't need to immediately shut them down i start listening to what they have to say and i found that they're just jaded mm. you know be- because of how how the world politics are at the moment you know and then i see myself in them you know as a queer person i get a lot of rejection mm. i get a lot of side eyes and stuff like that and <laughs> i don't know if it's unfortunate or is uh-huh. it or it's about time but like <laughs> now most men are actually experiencing the same thing mm. from women in general because like you know now women has more freedom has more independence you know where being with men is not necessarily something that they strive for mm. anymore it's an option for them in the mm. end of the day you know and so i guess most cis hetero male never experience that i mean there are for sure but yeah. not a lot of them now a lot of them experiencing that they are an option mm. and it definitely you know hurt them mm. and then you know in the past i realized maybe to some degree i contribute to the issues of this divide between sexes and i don't want to be that anymore so instead i start you know listening to them Because I do believe hurt people hurt people, yes, you know? that's true. And if they're feeling hurt, and then instead of, you know, opening up myself and listen to them, I, you know, hurt them again, it's just going to perpetuate the cycle yeah. for them. So I want to stop that. Mengharapkan hal yang sama, mereka akan terbuka dengan apa yang kamu sampaikan, gitu? Atau you just want to listen to them? Oh, no, I mean... I feel like it goes without saying. If you slow yourself down, if you if you stop talking and you let the other person talk, they will talk 
And then if you actually show them that you're listening to them, that you actually, you care about what they have to say, they would, you know, open up more, open up more. And then from there, I'd be like, no, I hear you. I mean, it can't be a very pleasant experience, etc. But then I tell them like, you know, from my perspective, You know, as a woman, as a trans woman, this is what I have been going through as well. Mm. You know, like uh, my parents told me, like not all men are bad, but like you do need to be aware that it is bad things comes from men. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's just given. You know, even so, I I try to 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 see it. You know, case by case. However, with that being said, I should still be aware and sharp that like you know all men can potentially be a problem mm -hmm. not all men are problem. the problem yeah so it, it's, it's that mindset and then like you know I, i i told them like how men are like very privileged and stuff like that and then they kind of sort of in the end just tell me like they just sick being rejected they're just feeling hurt of, of being rejected you know mm. what i mean and then like from there i can actually form a good connection with with this not just men by the way like you know hurt women as well yeah. form like a very good connection with them because like they able to open up to me mm. and because they open up to me I able to like listen to them like mm. truthfully and listen to like you know their concern and then in turn I open up to them about like my own concern and then mm. that's just how the pulling and the pushing happen and yeah that's what I do and they do open up when, when, when you listen when you just like you know put aside your prejudice put aside your pride put aside um your biases towards certain people and just stop and listen mm. it, it really works they will open up uh, beberapa pertemuan yang terjadi dan obrolan itu within a um, date setup is it not necessarily just a dating setup like let's say like i said because there's not very clicky here mm -hmm. so wherever gathering that i go to people would just like mash along and back to the point where i kind of push myself outside my echo chamber that mm -hmm. like you know i start talking to them you mm -hmm. know what i mean so within this context as well and you know being surrounded by a lot of foreigners and quote unquote misogynistic men <laughs> I do encounter a lot, uh -huh. you know, but now I change from before I immediately shut them down, trying to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. Now I just like, okay, you have that concern. Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What of my guy friend here, he has a very traditional view and he's also quite misogynistic you know mm. what i mean but he's not a bad person he's not he just he's just very traditional in his view he wants to have a girlfriend who is inherently more feminine mm. than him he mm. wants a girlfriend who's in who would take care of the house for him you know that's not a bad thing to choose or to have a preference to mm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. that woman ain't me you know that woman ain't <laughs> you know, maybe any or, or, or whatever. But that woman could be Cynthia. Cynthia could actually love mm. being submissive, mm. you know, and she choose that. And, and that's that's also okay just because Cynthia is like, you know, submissive or like wanting to be feminine does not necessarily mean Cynthia is less of a modern woman. Yeah. Like modern women are women who has the choice. choice. That's true. Has the option and we choose without being toxic about it, of mm -hmm. course. Because, you know, being toxic goes both ways. There, there are toxic masculinity, <laughs> there are toxic femininity. Femininity, yeah. So, yeah. Ngobrol in dating, how's your dating life here in Bali? Dating life, it's so... It's very challenging here mm. because, like, you know, the fact that Bali is almost like a like a travel destination. Yeah. Like, most people don't come here to live here. Most people come here to party, you know <laughs> what I mean? And, yeah, it is challenging because, like, chances of me meeting with, like, someone who only come here for the weekend, who only come here for two weeks, You know, good if they like, you know, stayed here for a month, but like that's still dating here. Oh, I can sum it up into there's an expiry date for dating in Bali, you know, because like at some point they will go back mm. at some point they would move on to like different city, different country. So that's what I've been finding out. And because I'm trans, because I'm trans, mm. there's also another layer to it, you know, um, men who approaches me to some degree would fetishize me mm. which just sucks yeah 
and uh, that's also makes you know dating in Bali even harder because like you know they don't necessarily see me as a person anymore they just see me as an experience mm. on top of that because they're only here for a short time they feel like I need to experience that so like yeah that's my experience being in here see that's the thing it wasn't necessarily a concern to mm. me when I decided to like move here because at the time I was in relationship mm. I was actually engaged with someone oh wow so yeah for the first year that I lived here I was with this person you know until we you know long story short we decided to like end up um, ended our engagement you know Can long distance we both, we both move no not necessarily long distance because like he did move here for some time mm. and before covid we were actually living together we were only apart for like a year because of covid but then other than that we've been together for like six years yeah <laughs> five years out of that six years we were together in person but like mm. yeah long story short um it wasn't a good match mm. and we decided to you know end the engagement Gimana nemuin a good match di Bali dengan circumstances yang tadi Rana bilang? Oh, having a very solid uh, boundaries. Think about how I want to be treated by someone. And the bar is so low. <laughs> the bar is so low. Why do you say so though? Because the bar is like for me personally, it's just like be a, be a decent human being. Mm. You know what I mean? I'll I'm gonna treat you as a person. Treat me as a person. Hmm. That's my. That's the bar. But when it comes to like my boundaries, you know, I'm I'm not gonna meet you or we're not gonna start anything if you don't see me as something more than sex. Hmm. If you don't see me um, as a person, if that makes sense. That's first. Second, uh, we can't have anything if you have. Your own reservation about dating a trans person or being seen in public with a trans person, mm. if that makes sense. We're not going to do anything, first of all. Yeah. What else? If we won't necessarily have any sort of interaction beyond just, you know, physical stuff, I'm also not going to, like, start anything with this person. So, like, yeah, having a very good boundaries for, for me to kind of navigate it helps hmm. a lot to eliminate the bad ones. Perlu ada koneksi tertentu gitu, kan, untuk sebelum memulai sesuatu. Well, I mean, first of all, yeah, absolutely. Like, first of all, like, I'm, I need to be able to, like, communicate with, the, yeah. with this person. For sure, you know what I mean? And I need to be able to be opinionated with mm-hmm. this person without this person feeling like... Um, Being attacked or something? Yeah, yeah, things like that. Because like sometimes it's not personal. It's just like <laughs> I'm sharing my opinion about something. And just lots of talking, lots of like vibe checking, mm. you know, lots of... Let's meet up for coffee. Let's see how, uh, you know, how you feel being around me in public. You mm. know what I mean? Like that's important for me because... I I don't want to just exist in the bedroom, if that makes sense. Speaking from my own perspective, it's going to set me back way, way back. Because like I've never been in the closet, if that makes sense. Mm. So like if, if I'm with someone and he put me back in the closet, that's just ironic. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, uh, lots of talking, lots of communicating. Like communicate, communication is like the thing that actually like turns me on. So mm-hmm. like like uh, about someone, it's like if I can be, if I can feel safe into voicing myself, mm-hmm. that's a good, like, that's a green flag you know if if i can feel like not necessarily understood but if this person actually gave me a space for me to kind of like vent out or complain or or just sharing my ideas my thoughts and everything it's definitely like a yeah like a, like a massive green flag because i do the same ada bedanya enggak sih ketika uh, kamu tinggal di Jakarta dan Bali in terms of um, how you navigate yourself as a trans person oh it's the same it's always something that i i have been aware of you know i don't want to catfish anyone 
everyone, you know, so like disclosing my my gender mm -hmm. is very important for me mm -hmm. right from the start so that they can manage their expectation, I can manage my expectation. So, no, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same, you know. The so do you feel uh, safe to move around? Here? Here or even in Jakarta? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thankfully. But that's a, that's a privilege that I hold and it's not something that I take lightly considering I know that my experience may may not be the same as like you know most trans women out there the fact that you know I have been accepted by my family my friends my peers you know from the get-go it helped for me to have this confidence for me to have this feeling of safety when I go out in public if that makes sense because mm -hmm. uh, no one has ever told me otherwise no one has ever disqualified me mm -hmm. as a woman just because I'm trans you know out in the public and I know that's a privilege so like uh, do I feel safe you know going out into like dating scene here or in Jakarta the same feeling mm. what do you miss the most of, of uh, about Jakarta apa yang dikangenin dari Jakarta makanan enggak kayaknya sometimes though like um, oh, okay <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So, Oh, oh my god. Uh, Soto like, Betawi, enggak ada yeah, di sini jarang banget. Yeah, mm. no, I mean, no. They do, but it's not good. Yeah. Even bubur ayam, it's like not as great as the one in Jakarta. You know what I mean? Most of the time here, it's like, why is it sweet? You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's supposed to be salty and you know and savory. Uh -huh. It's not. It's sweet. So like, I do miss a lot of food. Like every time I visit my family, I'd be like, okay, today I'm eating this. Tomorrow I'm eating that. Or actually, I have this for lunch and this for dinner. Mm. So like, yeah. Oh, like well. even oh my god, ketopra. There's no good ketoprak in Bali. Yeah, no, there isn't. Uh, there is okay. no good ketoprak in Bali, which is sad. Even though it's like very simple and comfort food in a yeah, way. Yeah, uh, some, that's sometimes like you know, like when you still awake around midnight and it's like oh, I'm hungry, that's true. and it's like ketoprak. It sounds very good. I can't do that here. Yeah. They don't have it. Um, Itu problem banget sih. Yeah, I do miss. Uh, I mean, obviously my family. And I do miss, like, you know, my friends who live in Jakarta. Mm -hmm. I miss my my old routine, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, yeah. within, you know, like a weekly routine that mm -hmm. I used to have, like going out after work on a Friday, mm -hmm. you know, and then on Saturday, me just like spending my time with my sister and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I do miss that, you mm -hmm. know. Working like... Um, like going to the office sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh God. Like, because like, you know, since I start working remotely and the fact that like, I don't necessarily need to think about what to wear. Yeah. That's actually, that's sad. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's really sad. Like some people I'll, find comfort though. True, yeah. but like it's like oh, I want to dress up today, but then I'm be like to wear. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Zoom meeting. <laughs> I don't know place to like to to like to to dress up to. So like that's something that I I, I do miss mm. about Jakarta. Mm. It's like the fact that like I can wear heels and it's it makes sense. There are more options when it comes to like fashion in Jakarta and yeah, family and friends. You are working within like also like media, right? Yeah. What's on your thought about media in Indonesia? Well, I mean, for sure. Uh, I like to think that what I do is not necessarily just journalism. Mm -hmm. It's it's base. It's mainly storytelling. And unfortunately, when it comes to trans story, not enough trans women be in a position where they can actually tell those story in a um, ethical fair way you mm -hmm. know what I mean like most of trans stories in the past has been told by cis hetero uh, point of view so not enough like our own point of view being presented in media that's first the fact that you know most publication or stories around queer stories has been told in a very negative way you know I think the reason why is because we don't necessarily have enough queer people in in a position to to make that happen yeah, or to, to correct it yeah or they're not necessarily part 
part of the stakeholder. Not a lot of like you know queer people are part of the stakeholders when it comes to like these stories being put out. Mm-hmm. So there's almost no accountability. You know, like mm-hmm. most people or like most media in Indonesia because they don't they're not necessarily. I, I can't just like you know blame them you know blindly. It's also because they don't necessarily have people who are from the community telling them like, hey, this is not. We're not supposed to you know tell the story like this or like this story is going to be harmful for like specific group of people and yeah. stuff like that no one is telling this media about it because queer people aren't part of the stakeholder you know they're not part of like you know the people who are calling the shot and that's how i see what i do it's like i i i luckily i am in a position where i could be part of that stakeholder where i essentially have a space where i could try and correct if you know certain publication is going to be harmful towards the queer community i can only do so much but like you know But I do want to see more queer people go into uh, publication. Karena kan ada banyak pertimbangan juga ya. Um, mm-hmm. Clicks, katakanlah kalau itu konten-konten website gitu. Um, kadang di banyak kasus ada clickbait, right? Yeah. How do you make sure that that doesn't happen? And how do you convince them? I think when it, whenever okay whenever whenever like a clickbaity or like a very harmful publication yeah. around queer people happened it falls onto us mm-hmm. you know queer people who are already open who are out of the closet to use our voice to use our social media you know social media is very powerful nowadays yeah. to use our social media to kind of help reshape that bad publication mm. to help maybe put out something that like you know help explain about the case help explain about certain stuff you know it falls on us who are out of the closet to be able to take the narrative back like i said i know i'm privileged to be able to say this that like i am out of the closet you know i am living openly as myself it is a privilege but that privilege also comes with responsibility that you can't just like take your you being out for granted like you need to do something about it mm-hmm. as well educate people you know expose yourself more mm-hmm. expose more people towards like what queer life is mm-hmm. in, in, in a in a in a in a tradition sense you know what I mean expose how you live expose how expose your opinion expose expose yourself if that mm. makes sense you know expose your opinion about certain stuff so like that's that that's what I do or that's what I want queer community to do especially mm. if you are already out of the closet you know because it's very personal I'm not going to I'm not going to persuade I'm not going to encourage anyone to come out of the closet because yeah. it's none of my business it's their own but to those of us who are let's, let's do something about it don't don't just don't just like it's not because if they're if they're going out if they come out or if you kind of put some some sort of spotlight on yourself it's going to be bad at you you know it's not it's not a pie if that makes sense just because you're out you get all this attention or like you get all this like good things happening to you and then like mm. when whenever like you know someone goes out it's going to be taken away from you it's not in mm. fact uh, the more of us feel safe the more of us feel seen mm. the more of you know us seeing our culture seeing our way of life seeing seeing the fact that we exist the more acceptance would come you know what i mean the more understanding between each other would 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 be formed so yeah that that that's what i believe i know so many people who take that for granted like they don't want to change the status quo yeah because they feel like it's it's good enough for me like i'm not i'm not missing anything i'm not losing anything so like i don't want to change the thing i don't want you know more queer people to like come out because like if they do there's going to be like another resistance you know like maybe the the, the government would like you know start making being queer hmm. um illegal and therefore it's going to be like you know harder for my life like it's not that it's, mm. it's it really isn't but like some people do believe that mm-hmm. if that makes sense yeah if, yeah if they change the status quo it's going to take something away from them and it's not mm. like i can assure you 
it's not, you know, I exposed myself. I stepped into the light, mm. you know, I opened up myself like I am transforming, mm -hmm. you know, in some of like my publication. And that never actually taken anything away from me, mm. if that makes sense. Uh, in fact, I got more and more support by like my community yeah. or e even by the hetero community saying mm. that I did not know this about trans women, you know, or like I did not know that, you know, like trans women can be this, can be that, you know what I mean? From my experience, they just don't understand because like so many family members, you know, extended family as well. Sometimes they don't understand what I am or like what I do. Well, I just need to like sit down with them and just like, well, you know, I am trans, but like I still go to school, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I still I still have good grades. You know, I still graduate. You know, I just I just need to show them that me being trans is not necessarily translate into deviant or like I'm not. It's not something that is socially wrong. So, yeah. And then in terms of, like, our... The new generation are more open and accepting of, like, queer people. Absolutely. Absolutely, they are. Mm. You know? Sometimes, which is very fair, our own internalized fear yeah. of rejection is the thing that kind of holds us back, if that makes sense. But, mm. like, although it's so... I can... This can sound very out of touch for me to say because, like, not... A, again, not a lot of people have the same experience as I do or background as yeah, I do some of them some of their fear are actually valid because like some of these people it may be risk of being disowned by their family risk of you know being cut off mm. financially mm. by their family and so on and so forth so it's, it's very valid but yeah um, our society is technically kinder to you know trans people and queer people because it is part of Indonesian that we've, we've, we've been here forever so yeah there are ways for Indonesian to, to be able to accept you you just have to I guess not do bad things but that that goes for everyone not just queer yeah, people yeah of course yeah so yeah but it is, it is a matter of like um, we tap, tap into privilege and how you sort of um, I don't want to say curate yourself sometimes because it's also like unconsciously I guess what we do uh, to na navigate ourselves as yeah. a queer person right but it's also if we let's say choose to be in a spotlight um, or expose ourselves we have to sort of um, be on our best behavior yeah. for sure and also and love ourselves right <laughs> Sure, mm -hmm. yes. But again, it's not just for the queer people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being in your best behavior goes for everyone in mm -hmm. our world. You know what I mean? No one wants to, even though it could happen, but like logically, no one wants to support anyone who are mean or bad. Mm, yeah. You know, like that's that's not it. So let's not do that even though we're out and about let's you know try and set up like you know a positive example mm. try set up um being a model citizen or <laughs> sort of <laughs> also you know try to open up your space for mm -hmm. like other people yeah safe space like extend like you know extend your privilege you know um around yourself not just don't gatekeep it if mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah that's mm -hmm. that's what i believe but do, don't you ever tire though do that no because i mean uh, it, it, how is it tiring you know mm. like if, if there's someone if there's like a like a trans baby <laughs> you know, approaching me like you know asking for advice or uh -huh. things like that well i mean for sure it's, it's case by case yeah. but like i would for sure you know open up like um my space for them mm -hmm. like it's kind of like i have a friend finally decided to transition mm. you know she came up to me saying that like you know i'm thinking about starting hrt and mm. stuff like that and then this is what i told her and she took it very well and she took it to her her heart i told her like this is hrt is a very um big decision to make and I know that we've only known that, you know, this is how you feel mm. for not even a year. You know what I mean? And so, like, let's, how about we start slow, slowly? Yeah. You're still very young. You can catch up with, with HRT. But how about you feel more comfortable in yourself mm. first and then feel more comfortable in yourself in presenting more feminine first? Uh. You know, and I'm not saying you should, but like, if you could try to 
take expand that into like more public spaces in the safest way yeah. in the safest way before you actually decide and then after after you've done all that you feel comfortable in all that mm -hmm. then maybe you can seek out professional for your hormone therapy you know what I mean or your hormone replacement therapy and stuff like that that's exactly what she did and not only she's more at ease with herself she's done everything you know properly mm. because at the end of it at the end of when when she finally decided to do the hrt there's no shame into doing what she's doing anymore there's no 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 question rising anymore in terms of like is this actually right for me you know like is this am i actually am i do i actually enjoy you know am i actually a girl or like a woman you mm. know what i mean yeah so she's now on have been on hrt and she is happier so wow. that's that's what i do it, it is case by case like i said but that's i always open my, my 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 space up for like you know other queer people other trans people last question what is love to you Ooh, i think love is acceptance most of all for me because acceptance not only comes with you being who you are and feeling comfortable and it also comes with kindness so if i can just you know jumble it into like one word love is uh, acceptance for me that's exactly what what it is in my life it's like because i have been accepted by everyone in my life you know by my family my close friends my friends my peers i felt love i feel love so yeah love is acceptance Cinta adalah penerimaan, itu yang Rana bilang. Penerimaan akan diri sendiri dan perbedaan yang ada di sekeliling kita. Alih-alih menebalkan perbedaan, justru kita mungkin menyediakan diri, membuka diri untuk perbedaan, meski dengan orang yang ada di seberang. Episode ini menjadi pungkasan Love Bus Season ke-7. Sampai ketemu di season berikutnya. Love Buzz Membicarakan perkara yang tidak dibicarakan ketika berbicara perkara cinta Love Buzz